Hey guys, Saeed here. I want to start making secondary videos to pair up with some of the other videos that I produce. You know, those videos take a lot of time, a lot of pre-production, a lot of research, a lot of video edi videoing, editing, and then post-production. And often, after I'm finished with the video, I'll still find interesting clips or people will send me emails in regards to their thoughts about the different movies art research that I included in the films. So in relation to my Muslim uh, portrayal of Muslims in Hollywood video, I found a few clips that I wanted to include and some comments that were made in relation to having an antagonist in films. So some people were saying that, you know, the reason that Muslims are primarily used as villains in movies, right? It's not, it's not too different from the portrayal of the Vietnamese, the Viet Cong, as villains, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And we can look at these two clips right here, one from Brothers, which came out like a decade ago, and one from Deer Hunter, which came out about 30, 40 years ago. Him. It's you or him. Kill him or I will kill you. Kill him. So as you can see, there's some like very similar parallels between the the two clips. Pretty much a need for a villain, a bad guy, which I've talked about in the previous films. But I do want to speak more about the psychological context for why audiences naturally need an antagonist. And that's something called the in-group bias. Like I said, I'm recording this video in my car before I'm about to head to the park. So it's not as extensive as some of my other videos, but I am leaving some peer-reviewed research for you to uh, broaden your knowledge on the in-group bias. I did find this really interesting article which exposed individuals to portrayals of Asians in cinema and found that those who immerse themselves in more positive portrayals of Asians uh, tended to have lower implicit biases, um, something they did using an implicit bias test, which is really interesting, right? You flash words uh, and then images of, in this case, Asian faces, and you want to see the amount of time it takes to pair up the exposure to the Asian face with a positive word or a negative word, right? Uh, I'm leaving that peer-reviewed research uh, article in the, in the description below. And this also touches on the previous video series that I made, and that's another point of conversation that's been happening, and that's the real-life implications of these biases, right? And the last video series I made was on attraction. So in the first part of that video, I talked about attraction and how research has found that individuals who are higher in attractiveness, right, symmetrical faces, uh, leaner bodies, right, uh, and especially women, right, women tend to be much more physically attractive than men. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, tend to have much, much more reduced uh, sentencing, right? I'm including a second article which talks about the importance of implicit biases for judges, which is something that has some real life connotations. I mean, imagine um, going into a courtroom with a jury of your peers and some of them have very strong anti-Muslim prejudice and you're a woman who's wearing a hijab who's obviously Muslim, right? There's only so much the court system can do to weed out people who are explicitly racist, right? I mean, someone who's like obviously has prejudice against the Muslim person, but there are, nowadays it's usually implicit biases, right? And With the dreadlocks? That's crazy. That's a defendant's cure if I ever saw one. Did you see his shoes? He polishes those shoes every night. He makes his own clothes. He may look like a brother with an attitude to you, but I see a man with a shotgun under his bed. And woe betide the creature who steps into his garden. And number six, 
your favorite? She's damaged goods. She's a Catholic school teacher. Hmm? Believes in human frailty? No. There's something missing from her. She's wrong. She wants on this jury. Somebody hurt her and she wants revenge. How the hell do you know that? I don't know. This definitely has real life implications because, I mean, it would be a different picture altogether if, you know, religiosity was on the decline for all religious groups, but it's not for the Muslim population, you know? And Islam is a very strong, cohesive, ritualizing faith, you know? And it's important that we understand our implicit biases. Um, and, you know, there's a really great video series um, that came out like 15 years ago. Uh, 15 years ago called 30 Days with Morgan Spurlock. It's a great example of one of the main things we can do to reduce bias, and that's called exposure. And that's, let me put this clip right here. A practicing Christian from West Virginia goes to live in the heart of Muslim America. Could I pass for an Arab? Will the clash of cultures confirm his belief that Islam is a violent religion? You guys think it's possible that there's any, like, sleeper cell activity around here? How Just many terrorists and, and, no, and no, 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 killings listen, here listen. in the last 50 years Come on. are people doing in the, in the name no, of, the of, of Jesus Christ no, 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 or, or in the name that. of Buddha no, or whatever? It's that. the Islamic I'm faith. talking about why people blow themselves up into buildings. What would drive somebody to do that? You can't just, just sit just there and say, you know what, it's them, they're, they're just psychos. You know, no, you gotta ask yourself. Just like Dr. Jackson said no, no, the other day. No, 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 uh, no, no, hold on, nothing. No, Sadi, I mean, I think this, uh, we'll pray, well, hold on. Shmile and I sort of butted heads, but right when we were kind of at our apex of, of battle, um, it was time to pray. Allah. After you know, taking uh, you know, five minutes to do so, all of the hostility and the, you know, the heart rate and all that was really pretty gone. Taking that time to, to do that, kind of redirect that anger, was good. Get me. I came back just realizing that there's some of the most awesome people, very compassionate, devoted, productive. I think we could use several million more of them, to tell you the truth. I will defend these people and defend their faith because you can't stereotype one and a half billion people or even 500 people for the actions of five. So that kind of gives you a direct example of someone who had pretty explicit biases and just through simple exposure maybe is not like ready to take the shahada, he's not ready to become a Muslim at all, but at least some of his preconceived notions have been changed, right? And that's... I mean, that's very important, and it's very important for Muslims also, right? We're not safe from this either, you know? The amount of Muslims that I know who have very strong anti-LGBTQ or anti-Jewish sentiments, right? And I'm not saying that we agree with the uh, lifestyle of other, other people like that, but we have to be conscientious of the fact that we're not integrating hatred into our belief system, right? Because that's not a part of our... It's not a part of our philosophy of life, and... The last thing I want to put is just because I've been finding very interesting, funny movie clips, and it spurned a conversation I had a couple of years ago when I was in multicultural class with another PhD student who was Russian. She came from Russia, and her and I had this conversation on the portrayal of Muslims in media and the portrayal of Russians in media, and I'm leaving a few clips right here all the way from the 1980s, like Ivan Drago from Rocky IV, but the character arc or like the trajectory of Russians you know whereas nowadays you you at least have some push towards representation of Muslims as multi-dimensional characters I mean this is not to be seen for Russian characters at all and we can compare this clip right here from the 1980s um, Red Heat to the 1990s Air Force One uh, to nowadays John Wick or Limitless right and you guys can look at this for yourselves
get off my plane. <laughs> My son, I might they help you? Motherfucker! This nice Nagavok deep rios! Yeah. Is it not you? I'm looking for a short term loan. Yeah, and I told Deb, forget it. What, uh, why? Because I don't see you before, and I don't fucking like you already. <laughs> Why do I give you $100,000? And like one of the only positive portrayals that I can think of for Russians is Black Widow in the uh, Marvel Universe. And like an uh, ongoing meme that, we, that they have is that she lost her Russian, her Russian accent throughout the whole film series. Uh, so she's not even obviously Russian in the films, you know, so... Не так я ожидал провести этот вечер. Я знаю, что вы ждали. Так лучше, поверьте. I used to have nothing. And then I got this. This job. This family. And I was always better because of it. It was an interesting conversation that we had, right? And it ties back to the previous video series because I talked about um, societal tolerance for some sorts of prejudice, right? And in that video series, I talked about intolerance towards people who are overweight, right? And in this example, because Russians are obviously white, right, there's a much less emphasis on multicultural diversity representation of Russian characters, right? But it's interesting because prejudice is not unique to just one skin color or one people group. So let's do a better job of portraying Russians um, and Muslims and all other characters. Um, and more than just the representation on film and media, right? I mean, that's only so much uh, of the work to be done to create a more cohesive, uh, connected, compassionate world. Most of the work is going to be done on an individual and a societal level, right? So what can we do as individuals to broaden our self-awareness and reduce the boundaries that we place on us versus them, the in-group, out-group bias that we all have, our tendency to associate with people who look like us, who think like us, who have the same beliefs as us, and categorize others as wrong and from people who are especially malicious. Uh, and I talked about personality psychology, right? Some of that is tied towards people who are higher on disagreeableness, for example might be especially more malicious towards uh, people who have different beliefs than them, right? It's up to us to do things and enact behavioral patterns which can help reduce these biases and more than reducing biases, right? The positive opposite of that is increasing our compassion, increasing our love for our other, for our fellow human beings. And I want to, I want to continue making videos like these, um, just kind of spontaneous videos because you know the very interesting conversations have been uh, uh, coming my way from this latest video series um, thank you all so much we're getting close to a thousand subscribers continue supporting the channel the website is now up and running uh, psychexpert.com free resources for everyone I'm going to continue developing that website and that'll hopefully lead into my consultation service uh, after I graduate with my uh, with my PhD and then getting my license which will take another year or two Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to release the next video, uh, which will delve into the uh, modern age diversity representation of Muslims, and hopefully that can spurn more conversations. Thank you.